Hey everyone, welcome to episode 9 of Real Talk with Realtron. I'm super excited about today. We just came off our semi-annual meeting. It was a great opportunity for 500 Realtron agents to learn about what our company is doing and what our brand is doing going forth. Uh, but more excited than that, I'm excited to be here with longtime Realtron agents Robert Kroll and Mary Jane Viejo. They've been with Realtron for probably a combined 40 years or so. Is that right? I've been so, 31 years. Rob, wow, Rob, longer than I thought. Okay, so Rob's been with Realtron for 31 years. You started Almost older when you were, than you. You started when you were eight? No, you started when I was eight, actually, truthfully. Uh, and MJ, how long have you been? 2002. Since 2002. So, so you're, almost you're pretty fresh. Together. And your dad was a Realtron agent yes, going back years. to who knows when. Yeah. I remember him from the 90s, so <laughs> could have been before then. Uh, I'm excited to speak to you guys. Uh, building a business to last and working by referral is what I really want to talk about. Uh, you guys have both have a, a lot of success in different areas of the business. And over time, I think your business correct me if I'm wrong, has grown into a by referral business relationship based business. And you are two of the people that build relationships better than almost anyone I know. Uh, so Rob, I want to start with you. Was your business always by referral or how did you get started? It's interesting. When I started, it was not, first of all, I didn't have any contacts. I was young. My um, friends around me, relatives, were not buying and selling houses. So I had to create new business and I had to get new uh, prospects every day um, and I had been selling real estate for about eight or nine years and was fairly successful and um, all of a sudden I was sitting in a workshop on real estate and one of the questions that they had us do was where did your business come from and that hit me I had no idea where my business came from, so it's pretty basic. Sat down with a list of all my deals for the year, went through, said, are they listings, are they buyer sales, and where the leads came from. Um, at the time, I was doing you know, 30 deals a year, making some decent money, and I thought my business was 50-50, um, past clients and new clients. What and I found new clients out, being sorry, from new farming clients, and new clients from farming, from um, ads. At the time, we were doing newspaper ads, sign calls. Um, uh, basically, was it you pros our prospecting like flyers? And what I found out was that seventy percent of my business at the time was repeat and referral clients, and thirty percent was new business. So that was one sort of aha moment. Mm -hmm. And then what I did is, then what they said is figure out what your budget is. So what I found out was my budget was 70% attracting the new clients and 20, 25% of my budget that I was spending on promotions and advertising was, was geared at my past clients and referrals. So I thought this is sort of off-centered. Right. I'm spending all my money to work on the 30% and none of my money to work on the 70%. So immediately, I cut way back on the stuff such as advertising, promotion, and started spending my money on center of influence, past clients, sending out to my past clients, doing monthly mailers. Uh, I started a client party, yearly client party, and I switched it. Within the next year, I was spending 70% of my money on past clients and uh, referral business, and very little on new business. And within two years, my business doubled. That's amazing. So MJ, I think it's a similar story. You started off uh, working on new construction and, and building a client base like that. And then how did you transition into referral? I was doing the same thing. Very generic advertising, bus benches, half a page in the community newspaper. And that really wasn't uh, where my business was coming from. So I did look at that list. I found out that about 75% of them was repeat and referral business. What I started to do was target uh, a more personalized approach. If they referred me somebody, I'd take them out for dinner. I'd spend more time with them. I'd drop by their houses. And I found more and more and more, even at 75%, probably I'm at about 85% referral. So I've cut back on the um, cold prospecting and my phone has been ringing. Yeah. So what would you say the biggest advantage uh, in, in the changeover has been for you? The biggest advantage is the um, monetary marketing dollars are actually showing results. Right. So it's a more efficient use of marketing money, A. Mm. B, um, I'm developing a future client base because these people are referring me their kids and I'm into second and third generations in some families. And those sphere of influence is just grow with acquisitions of new clients. Yeah. 
Can I answer that yeah, question? Go ahead. I was going to ask you the same. So the biggest difference for me with past clients and referrals is that um, when I would get a call from a new prospect, somebody who called off a sign ad solicitation, a lot of times I'd be up against two or three other agents. When I get a call from a past client or a referral from somebody that I do business with, it's I'm the only agent that's there. And when I come in, they're already uh, they're already well. They've already they they've been given my name by somebody who knows me and loves right. me and knows that I did a great job. They're pre-sold. They're, they're pre-sold, yeah. and it's only really a question of do you have to sell? Where are you going? And let's get down to price. And they're right. more willing to listen to what I have to say yeah. because they've been referred by somebody who says, hey, Robert's an expert and Robert's going to look after you. Great. Yeah, that's a great answer. I, I always find the same thing. Uh, there's a big misconception that business by referral is just a, a kind of flimsy, you're not really fully engaged in your business and not treating it like a business. How do you maintain treating a business like a business? If I look at both of you, I just think you guys have a lot of friends who move and you guys just know a lot of people. That's what it seems like from the outside. Break it down on the inside. What daily activities do you do? What do you do on a regular basis to maintain your client base and grow it? Okay. Um, I keep in touch with them. That's my biggest thing. Yeah. It, not just the generic mailer, but actually look at their posts, comment on their posts on right. social media, send them a personalized message. That's what's changed. So how nitty gritty do you get in terms of like tracking your list of people and making sure you're in touch with them? Do you do that? Do you see how many times a year you've contacted someone or you just you just feel like you're out there all the time? I'm not, I feel like I'm out there all the time, <laughs> but I, I, I really do a, a seasonal thing that's targeted to my 500 top Influence, top clients right? Um, okay. and top sources of referral. So you've got a, a database of 500 past client referral sources, yeah. sphere of influence? Exactly. And then okay. the ones who are maybe the ones who send me like four deals a year, mm -hmm. I keep in touch with them a lot more, sure. whether it be driving in the car, shooting them a quick phone call, if yeah. they have a kid that's sick, calling to find out how the kid was. Right. More of a family kind of keep in touch as opposed to, hey, this, this property's on the market. Right. So yeah, one thing I always notice about Rob is if I drive by Rob on the street, he'll call me if right. you know, he's in my neighborhood, whatever it is, I right. just drove by your house, really good at keeping keeping in touch. I feel like that's a skill you guys have both developed over time. Um, so that's really good. Uh, Rob, how many people are in your database? Um, I have two databases. I have what I call a triple A client and an A client. And the definition is the triple A ones will send me business within the next 12 months. And the other ones may or may not send me business, but they're still on my list. So I've got this top list, which is probably only about 75 people that I know I can count on between one and three good leads per year. Right. And then I have the second list. So what I, what I do, which you didn't ask me, is I used to have some bad habits and always you know, your dad and your uncle always said, you know, always be changing, always be trying to make yourself better. I always tried to overdo things so I would book appointments too close together, too many appointments, right. I'd always be late. <clears throat> what I started to do is get to my appointment a half hour early. That was my goal. So if I had an appointment at 2.30, I'd be on the street in front of the house at 2 o'clock. So what are you going to do half hour before? And usually I run 5 to 10 minutes late, so I'm really only 15 minutes early. I keep a list with my AAA clients, and they have their name, and then every time I talk to them or leave a message, I put a check mark. So I sit down in the car, I've got 10 minutes, I make a couple calls, how are you, what's going on? Even if I leave a message, I just put a check mark. Yeah. So then when I sit down at my next appointment or the next week, I can look through and say, okay, I spoke to these people, I haven't spoken to these guys. So I call those people. And once I get through that list, then I go to the other ones that aren't going to be as good at referring people. And it's a quick call. When I call them, I go, hi, it's Robert, just want to say hello. Um, do you know anybody who's thinking about buying or selling real estate? And a um, couple little things. I used to say, tell them to call me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they'll, they'll say, oh, I sold so-and-so. Did they call you? No, right. they never call me. Mm -hmm. So I always say, call me and give me their name and number and ask if it's okay for me to call. Because a lot of times they won't call me. But if right. I take that initiative and pick up the right. phone and call them, it works out better. Yeah, that's so good. There's so much good 
juice in there. So simple thing, keeping a list of people. I mean, maybe, I don't know if I'm on your list, probably not, but you call, you call me regularly and I think you just call people. You're, it's amazing to see that you're really conscious of it and you're following through with it and you're, you're sticking to a plan. And then setting yourself up for success in the way that you actually build in the time into your day to make those calls is really good. A, it becomes a priority, not the last thing. And last thing I, I noticed from that is I find if you're making prospecting type calls when you're about to go into an appointment, you're a little more confident right. than if you're doing it at the end of the day when you've got nothing and what if it's what like if everything, yeah, yeah, that appointment's going to go better and the phone call's going to go better. Uh, but ahead. it's also programming your mind because I'm talking to people who know me and love me and mm -hmm. want to do business with me. Right. So you already put yourself in that mindset that I had a great conversation. And it's a quick conversation. I just say, hi, you know, I've just called. I just have a moment, but I wanted to call, see how you're doing, see if you know anybody, talk to you soon. Right. That's amazing. So being in the business as long as you both have, what keeps you motivated? What keeps it fresh for you? What keeps it exciting? MJ? I still like the nitty gritty of dealing with one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Nice just, young just couples to close the deal. Starting, starting their no, even just buying their first home. Yeah, just being part of their lives, just for that that capsule, that little time right. capsule of when they're looking for a house. Mm -hmm. I still enjoy that. Yeah, I, I that's what keeps me going. Yeah, and, and the fulfillment I get from it for getting the, the best possible house suited for their needs. Right, that's my thing. Yeah, I think all these agents that you, they want to hire a buyer's agent, they want to do that. They're they're missing out on what building what is relationships is all about. Yeah. yeah, what's their why? So for you, just, just getting to know a new buyer, first time buyer, helping them find their new house and helping build a relationship with over time. And, and that grows into people who are retiring and, and downsizing and they, I may have sold them three times already. Yeah. So I get some fulfillment out of just helping them into the next phase of their lives. Right. Rob, what keeps you going? I love the deal. Yeah. I love the deal. Um, Trump wrote a book called The Art of the Deal. Right. Um, I get a high out of same thing helping people buy a house sell a house negotiate a transaction and it gives me fulfillment yeah. i come home at night knowing that i listed a house i sold a house i sold the buyer a house i solved the problem and it um, makes me feel good and yeah. it's and and then i know that if you do a good job for someone it's the old if you do a bad job for someone they may tell two or three people or five people if you do a good job They'll tell less, but they'll still tell people. And that's what helps. And after 30, over 30 years of doing business, I have people that I've helped. They've got good houses because I know they're going to call me after two years, five years, seven years that they want to sell the house. And they'll say, remember, we bought this house and you got us this great right. deal. And uh, we've been really happy here and now we want to move. Or our kids are ready to buy a place and you did such a good job for us that now we want to do that. That's awesome. I think there are a lot of uh, people who work with a, with a group of their friends, family, and things like that. And then they get to a point where either they're, they're working with first-time buyers and the first time they're getting married and buying a condo, and then you can move up with them sort of and, and buy their first house and everything. And then those people get into their kind of 40s, 30s, late 30s and 40s, and they end up moving a lot less. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever ran into that with your database, your client base. How did you expand it, move into different areas, or, or did you run into that problem? Uh, I did run into that problem, but it wasn't really a problem because by then they had referred me all their other friends right. who in between have other relatives and maybe yeah. their parents are downsizing. So if they're in their 40s, chances are they have a parent who's 65 and wanting to downsize. Right. So I've used that, that lull to create opportunities elsewhere mm -hmm. from yeah. the same source. Yeah, so I think just, just having the relationship is not enough. You've got to really pursue the Other referral enemies, yeah. yeah the referral to get them uh to connect and, and build on that relationship you've already had that's great um let's talk about your marketing your uh just beyond uh when you're listing marketing a listing how do you guys approach what what's really important in in marketing a listing and in getting a listing out there uh social media what, what do you what do you guys do right now what's interesting right now i think the whole process is exciting it's exciting for us as agents. It's exciting for the sellers. Um, social media has changed everything. So when we're getting a house ready, 
everybody wants to know what's not on the market yet, what's right. coming soon, right. the opportunities. So through Facebook, Instagram, all the other social media, we're able to take, I take videos and I'll say, hey guys, this house is coming soon. If you're interested, give me a call, you know somebody. And we've sold a number of houses before they've actually hit MLS or people have let them know. Now my social media is open to other real estate agents, so a lot of times I'll get those agents calling. And right. you know what, it's fine because my goal is really to work for the sellers to get their house sold. Mm -hmm. So if it's another agent calls me, it's not on MLS, are you cooperating? Of course, I'm here to get the house sold, get them the best price and uh, move on. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's an amazing point, just getting your listings out there, being out there and showing mm -hmm. your network already. I think the social media plays so well with a with a network based change the landscape. business and, and yeah. I do a bunch of uh, exclusive listings maybe we're trying to get ready for the market mm -hmm. I'm helping them stage getting contractors in there um, right. and that has helped me immensely yeah and I think if you can get a call or two from an unlisted property I think that opens yes. your world up exactly. so definitely yeah, advertising the listing ahead of time getting it out there finding who's in your network that's interested that's doing stuff I think that's really great um, Let's change uh, topics a little bit and talk about how uh, growing a business, how do you manage a business, manage your finances, work on that. What have you guys done, implemented over the years, or, or what would you like to see going forward uh, to do better in terms of your own personal finances, uh, working with, once you start making some money, what did you do? Did you go nuts? Did you buy something silly? I know you're a car guy. You like the cars. Uh, what's an important tip, something you've learned over the years? The sure. first thing that I did that was really, really beneficial to me financially was incorporate. That was the great biggest one. change. Uh, that was the greatest thing that I did and I can't say enough about being grateful that I did it. Um, mm. Paying taxes on time, remitting quarterly, uh, being a lot more disciplined that way and the incorporation process has helped me become a lot more rigid with that. Yeah, that's great. Incorporating. Rob, tips? You know what? Goals. Uh, I have a dream board mm -hmm. and a dream board I is... I said gold. I was gold. like, what, do you just buy gold <laughs> yes, bars? Yes, gold. You <laughs> buy gold. <laughs> Melt it down. <laughs> no, a dream board in my office with pictures of things that I want. Yeah. Um, I like vacations. I like cars. I like watches. Um, so, you know, real estate is a platform to achieve what you want and also about giving back. And I do a lot of donations. I've helped a lot of people that are struggling financially. Um, but again, it's about me achieving a goal. Mm -hmm. I don't have this, uh, I, I want to travel. I want to, uh, I have a daughter in university that's starting her life off. I have a son. I want to create memories with my family. It's, so those are the things, then it becomes your, they say, what is your why? Like, right. why do you do it? And it's, it's not just about having a pile of cash in the bank because you can't take it with you. And um, yes, I like material things, but it's also about creating memories and experiences. Mm -hmm. I like going to concerts. I like traveling. I like doing things. I like good restaurants. Um, my going back to repeat and referral and past clients is I do spend my clients become my friends. My right. friends become my clients. So a lot of times I'll go out for dinner. I'm happy to go out even if I pick up the bill or whatever right. to enjoy the time with them because inevitably it comes out to um, who's the real estate agent. I used to throw a client party and at the end of the, or I'd get up and I'd make a speech and I'd say, guys, thanks for coming. And if you want to be invited back next year, you got to send me some more business. <laughs> I like that. That's great. That's really good. Um, and lastly, your, your business set up, um, Rob, it's you and one assistant. I have one uh, unlicensed assistant, right? And I have right now one other person who happens to be my mom, okay. who is licensed and can help me out because I can't be at two places at the same time. Right. And MJ, how does? Uh, I have a, a, a licensed associate who happens to be my cousin, okay. and another licensed associate who happens to be my spouse. Right. And if I really need a pinch hitter, then I have a stepson. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and you don't have a licensed assistant, an unlicensed assistant. No, sorry. I do not. Okay. You, is that something you're looking for or something you're not really not for right you? Now. You handle you know, all the people. It all like family and if yeah. I send my cousin or my spouse, then they still feel like they've got a personal connection to me. Right. So it's, it's a family business. Yeah. And, and to Rob's point, I enjoy spending time with my clients 
with their families. Mm -hmm. So I stress that whole um, bonding with the family and we service them like a family too. Yeah. I'm going to add Great. something. Go ahead, please. You know, I start, I, they always tell you you should spend time on your business, not in your business. So I do a lot of evaluations on my business. And one of the things I found was I used to have a lot of problems and aggravation in my business. And it's the old 80-20 rule. 20% 20 of the people in your business, in your life, cause you 80% of your aggravation. So I went through and I said, okay, I'm dealing with this person, that person, and they're not happy. They're not happy with the work. You will never make them happy. That's just the type of people. They want too much for their house. They don't want to sign on the lawn. They don't want appointments. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, they can only have a Saturday between seven and nine at night. So I cut all of those people out. And at this point in my career, I can choose who I work with. Right. And I work with good people. The other thing, when we talk about referral people, good people know other good people. Jerks know That's jerks. Right. So I got rid of, get rid of all the yeah. jerks. And I tell you, it's hard. And, and Alex has always taught, you can't, if you don't have enough, if you only have one lead and it's a person who wants too much for their house and they're unreasonable and they're this, uh, you hold on to them because you, you're afraid you need the money. But if you have lots of leads and lots of people to work with, you can pick the good ones. Work with those ones. Make them happy. They're easier to make them happy. And then, you know what? Get rid of the the ones that are going to cause you aggravation, they want to call you at seven in the morning and right. nine o'clock at night and complain and everything mm -hmm. else. But Rob, Get the it just good goes people. Back to working smarter, not harder. Well, but it's working. Yeah. It's working smarter. But it's it's like at any business, you can choose who you want to do right. business with. Work with good people. If you're good, people will appreciate you. Find the people that appreciate you. Because otherwise, you're spending all your time trying to make people happy that you can never make happy. Inefficiently. That's I think that's a great uh, note to leave it on. Uh, for anyone who wants to grow a long-term business, uh, you guys are two great examples of building a business, doing it with integrity, doing it slowly over a long period of time and just growing client by client, experience by experience, staying motivated, staying interested. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure for me. I've learned a lot. Thank you, Mary Jane Viejo, Robert Kroll. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. For Real Talk with Realtron, I'm Jeremy Polarski. Have a great day and a great month.